Oh, God, this is a fucking mess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's okay, fine. We... Yep. Just let me switch. Okay. Uh, all right. I'm assuming that means we're good to go. So, hello, greetings, people of the internet. My name is Magnicora. Today I will be running The Messenger. It's an indie game that came out in 2018. It did fairly well for itself. You may have heard of it. Uh, now, I will admit to the fact that I'm not the best at this game. Uh, I've only been running it for about four months. Uh, so I'm not the most knowledgeable about the things in the game, which is why I recruited the help of some commentators. Uh, first of all, we have uh, uh, Storms, who recently made the top five in 8-bit. Storms, have Yo, say he hello to the people. <laughs> hello, everybody. I'm, I'm Storm, so Storm. All right, and second of all, but not the least, uh, we have Halfling Helper. And uh, if you're wondering who has the world record in any category in uh, the Messenger, chances are the answer is Halfling Helper. Say hello to the people, Halfling. <laughs> All right. And uh, he also happens to have the world record in the category we're running today, which is Linear. Uh, for those of you who do not know, the game is set up into two different parts, a linear part and a metroidvania part. And uh, today we're only going to do the linear part. With this, uh, I don't think we had an incentive for the name, so let's do uh, Rainbow Rail Road. Yeah, All I right. think before you start off, I would quickly read two donations we got. We yes. got a $10 donation from Anonymous. Thank you for that. And also we got a $5 donation from Vesul. Also, thank you for that. All right, cool. And the timing starts uh, right when I press yes here. And it's going to be in three, two, one, go. Well, good luck. Thank you. All right, so, so the level we're starting off in is called Ninja Village. Uh, we don't have any upgrades. Um, essentially, we're just a student ninja, and we have to go to class, even though we really don't want to. Um, you're going to see right off the bat, we basically can jump and slash. That's it right now. And we can hit these objects, like lanterns and training dummies, and that gives us something called a cloud step. And that's basically a second jump that we can use in the air. And it's basically the core movement ability of this game. Uh, so you'll see we're using it to get over these pits and just fly through the air, and it's going to be carried with us throughout the whole run. Most important strat here. Holding down. Very important. We get a shorter hop backwards there. Um, let's just start running to the right again faster, and we have to run less far, so it saves a few seconds in this otherwise very... Um, yeah, the talk, talking a level. bit about the story of the game. So basically, uh, like Halfling mentioned, we are in Ninja Village, and yeah, everybody can see we got attacked by a big demon king. And this happens, I think, every 500 years. And luckily, the so called Western hero saved us and giving us now a scroll. And with that scroll, basically, we have a messenger now, like the title of the game is indicating and need to go up towards the biggest mountain to bring the scroll towards the so-called Tower of Time that we will get introduced later. And it will make so. us cry. <laughs> Tower of Tears. So the <laughs> first stage coming up now is Autumn Hills. It's also the most recent heavy stage in the whole speed one. Uh, yeah, right off the bat, we get a, um, a lot of complicated rooms and pretty damn optimized stuff. And also we need to take care of our shot count. So for the first shop that we will enter soonish, we need 40 of the so-called time shots, these uh, small yellow thingies. And we need 40 because we need to buy our first upgrade. And Good yeah, count. 36 is a good number, so now we got 42 and entering the first shop. We will not see the shop too much, but this is the shopkeeper. And basically the shopkeeper just gave us a climbing claw, so we can climb walls now. And we also bought the first upgrade, that is Strike of a Ninja. And with Strike of a Ninja we can slash projectiles and get a cloud step also from these projectiles. 
Like so. A very nice upgrade to have. It's if you're running uh, no upgrades or low percent, uh, which is the low percent for this game, uh, you will very much miss the ability to uh, be able to slash projectiles. It's yeah. you can do a damage boost here, but I don't like it, so I don't do it. <laughs> yeah, it can be. You can sometimes get boosted to the left, um, which can be unfortunate because then you have to wait it out anyway, and you're on low health for the rest of until you get to the next uh, HP. Yeah, at any point you want to avoid to die uh, pretty much in the early game of a game because, yeah. yeah, we need money. And if you if you are dead, uh, we will get introduced to a certain demon that follows us and grabs all of our money. And yeah, we don't want that because we need the money. That being said, I may die in the next couple of screens, uh, depending <laughs> on if I go for everything. Because I might miss the spike tower. I've been missing it lately. And there's my first so, bit of damage. So uh, a little neat feature of the developers is here that the sound is kind of uh, de yeah. deepened uh, during the water sections. And yeah, the soundtrack itself is glorious. So nice Let's spike go. tower. And yeah. Pretty much, this is all. This was also a huge part bringing me into the speed run of this game because the soundtrack is just too good. So shout out to Rainbow Dragon Eyes who made that soundtrack. Yeah, it's a great, great, great OST. Um, just more long horizontal rooms. Uh, we see quite a few of these in Autumn. It's a mainly horizontal stage. Um, as we get like later into the game, we'll see stages with a lot more verticality. Um, cool jump. But especially since Autumn is focused on teaching you the basic mechanics and the combat and stuff, it's not too complex in that respect. There's lots of tiny optimizations oh. that we try to do. Oh, wow. <laughs> that was close, but yeah. All right. So yeah, the category uh, uh, we are showing off today is uh, linear. It's called linear because of reasons we would get into later. But uh, basically, this game is yeah, parted, uh, like already mentioned, in several sections. Uh, So-called 8-bit section, a linear section, and a Metroidvania section. And the linear part would be kind of the half point of this whole game. So now we have enough time shots. So after after Autumn, oh, we gosh. need 130 uh, 30, uh, sh time shots to buy the next two upgrades, uh, the shurikens and the so-called second wind update. Uh, update upgrade. <laughs> uh, second wind is for uh, is for damage boosting, so that we can recover from damage boosting. And the shurikens we need for this boss fight here now, the so-called leaf golem or leaf monster. And what we are basically doing is we are ducking in front of the leaf monster and just, yeah, throwing all of our stuff towards it to one cycle it and beautifully done. So, yeah, this was Autumn Hills, the first stage of the game. Yeah, very nice Autumn. Coming up next, we have the um, longest level of the run. And an amazing yeah, 12 four, four second split. An amazing 12 second split. Just really optimizing these jumps here, uh, falling down extra quickly. <laughs> yeah, so Fall on Temple is only relevant later in the game, but we will not see that point today, so this will come after Linear. So we are in Catacombs now, because we can't pass that bridge, because it hasn't built, uh, been built yet. So Catacombs, a really cycle-based stage, and we also got the so-called Phobokin uh, at the start of the stage. The Phobokins are also relevant for the second part of the game. And now we get a glimpse at the boss of the stage. And as we can see, he is quite mighty. He has a big staff. He can summon enemies. So yeah, we will see him later again. Terrible. Yeah, Catacombs is where runs go to die. Like, yeah, half, half of my can. resets I can occur here. It can be a really difficult stage, especially when you're trying to hit all the cycles that you go for. Um, like, even though it's cycle-based, it's, it's cycle-based not in the sort of negative sense where you're forced to wait a lot. Um, 
more so just that there's lots of strats and options for taking rooms as fast as you want or as slow as you want. Um, I which, figured out. which means you can go for some quite hard stuff that I figured, out this, I figured out this room like just today. I figured out that you really need to like make full jumps out of the water in order to beat that cycle there. Oh yeah, yeah. Just something for people who may be thinking of picking up this game. Yeah, it's a really fun game to speedrun, even if you don't necessarily have a lot of experience. Um, because you can just sort of play through the game and slowly improve your time. It was my first, no, nah, my second, like, serious speed game, but I've stuck with it for so long because because the movement is just so fun to yeah. improve at. Yeah, it's, uh, it's really easy to pick up a game, and yeah, I think, like, most of the speed ones, it's easy to pick up and hard to master, so... Yeah, and we have a good number of tutorials, actually. Like, 2C has, a, has one that's it's a bit old, but it's still, like, really good to pick up the game and Narga came up with uh, one just a few weeks ago that's also like really good. No, no bottom. Okay, did a great job. Yeah. So, so the trick... uh, oh yeah, yeah go ahead. Hopefully. So the trick there is called the donk a donk uh shadows to Kyle. Um essentially we're trying to carry a cloud step through the room transition to skip the cutscene trigger. Um which meant which would mean we wouldn't have to fight those three wizards. Um but it's like a it's a two frame trick, so it, it's quite precise and definitely a place where a reset point, uh, especially as your times get faster and faster, it becomes a required trick to get. Yeah, and a, p a pretty damn frustrating trick or strand to be honest, because of the screen transition, it's not that easy to hit the two frames con con uh, consistently. So. Yeah, uh, now we're getting at the end of Catacombs, so just a few vertical rooms here. Uh, not getting this one, just so you know. <laughs> we are not going for Boards of Steel today, so there's a strat called Boards of Steel, uh, where you kind of go around or try to get the cycle in this room, but yeah, it can it can be a one killer, so not recommended for people starting out or even intermediate and marathons, people. Marathons, Ethan. Yeah. yeah, and even marathons, it's not... So now we have Ruxton, the, the person we already saw at the beginning, and yeah, surprisingly, Ruxton isn't as big as or as tall as he is supposed to be. But uh, yeah, so the Ruxton fight, Ruxton can spawn uh, can spawn in the bottom or can also spawn on the top platform. Oh, Unfortunately, no, we got the worst pattern at uh, in the lower lower section, so we want Ruxton to spawn up uh, at the top platform to be the fastest kill. And yeah, unfortunately uh, now yeah. we need to deal with Ruxin doing his his kind of shit, to be honest, and... <laughs> yeah, yeah, he also uh, activated you... the, the UFO, which I never usually get. And yeah. we also got another donation, uh, this time from Gordea, $25, so thank you very much for that. So that was Catacombs, uh, now we're moving into Bamboo Creek. Uh, it's a really fun level, um, there's no boss, and uh, just lots of fun movement in it, and the famous Bamboo Boogaloo song. Are you, <laughs> yeah. singing, are you, are you singing it, Storms? No, uh, I, only <laughs> Kyle can do that, so Kyle Perry is kind of the, the voice of the Bamboo Boys, Bamboo Crew. But, so there, there are lyrics to the song, uh, it's about uh, the, yeah getting Chinese food and loving Chinese food. But we will not sing that today. But yeah, besides that, like Huffling mentioned, Bamboo, really cool stage, really cool so soundtrack as well. And no boss here, so you can yeah be a bit more calm. But yeah, this stage has some pretty damn tough rooms. Yeah, and I'm like, you'll see we're skipping like decently big chunks of content, just cloud stepping up. Um, and not taking the required platforms. Um, like, this is the first stage, I think, where it, where you really get to see the, uh, yeah. s like, little sequence breaks that we do within each individual room. Yeah, but we this, jump uh, yeah. above <laughs> a tree. Um, it looks like out of bounds, but it's not out of bounds, I promise. Um, <laughs> there's, there is, um... There are like uh, an out of bounds categories where you clip out of bounds and do a lot of fun, crazy stuff. 
Um, but this is no out of bounds, so we won't be seeing any of that. That's that's about it. Yeah, th this is the famous BC11, so BC for Bamboo Creek and the 11 because it's the 11th room in Bamboo Creek. Yeah, this room is real, can get really optimized and pretty damn hard if you go for the harder threats later. And it's also one of the biggest one killer, I would I would say. Uh, yeah. So we have a lot of uh, threats for this room. I think right now we have five or six. Five or six, I think. Yeah, five I think it's five. Yet, it's yeah, five or six threats to do that room. That's kind of optimized from just five seconds to. So we had a thread called B2 that is only a second faster or one and a half second faster than the other ones. So yeah, it's uh, you can spend a lot of time in that room. 40 hours for some people. <laughs> yeah, we don't want to mention. <laughs> <laughs> we don't talk about that. Okay, yeah, this was Bamboo, uh, Bamboo Creek. Now we are getting into a holding grotto where we will get the next big upgrade, uh, the so-called wingsuit. So with the wingsuit, we can fly and or glide. As, yeah, not fly, more gliding. And we also get two more upgrades. This is the, oh god, I don't know how it's called anymore, but uh, that we can boost through water and also that we can wingsuit slash. So that we can slash while wingsuiting. I know Wingsuit Slash is called Aerobatics Warrior, but I do not remember the water boost's name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know how that upgrade is called. But as you can see now, with the Wingsuit, uh, we get a lot more vertical movement within the game. And we also make use of the Wingsuit to kind of not sequence, sequence break, but to yeah try to skip as much as possible of some rooms. And having the wingsuit slash opens up a lot more movement options. Um, it's just really nice to have. There's some categories where you don't get it, and it makes a lot, some of the rooms quite a bit slower. Um, so even though it seems like, oh, do you really need that? Um, there's probably a way to do it without it, but in some cases, it's sort of required to do rooms the fastest way. I um, pace. This room is affectionately called a uh, Donkey Kong room. Uh, you see we're zigzagging left and right, and the the rock guys uh, called boulder douches are throwing their boulders at us. <laughs> I did um, not know they were called boulder douches. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a very funny game, funny name. Um, the dev the dev team for this game is great. They put in uh, the writing's really funny. They put in uh, text skipping for us, um, and they're really supportive of the community as a whole. Um, yeah, they held like a tournament yeah. for this, for the there was a, this. There was a, they held a Sabo, Sabo Cup, uh, yeah, so shout out to Sabotage, uh, really yeah. cool devs. And also, uh, in, in autumn this year, uh, the new game from Sabotage will come out called Sea of Stars. Uh, it's a Chrono Trigger inspired RPG that's also in the Messenger universe. But yeah, shout out to Sabotage for this great speed game. And also great casual games. So even casually, this game is glorious. The oh, dialogues yeah. with the shopkeeper are hilarious, and it's a great game to even speed one or just playing casually. Yeah. So yeah, we're nearing the end of Howling Grotto. Um, yeah. The boss, the boss for this stage uh, can be a bit tough. Hi. Uh, but. Um, like, yeah, definitely. Also, I feel like we're saying this a lot, but yet another reset point, at least for me. Um, so we'll see how it goes. Um, yeah, the, the biggest problem for speedrunners with this boss is uh, you need to count how many hits you do. And uh, what we want to do here is we want to hit the, the core, the green yellow core in the middle of the golem seven times, and the last hit should be done with a shuriken. Yeah, we want to hit it with the shuriken from as far away as possible, so we can get up to this, this head part as quickly as possible. Because ideally, we're going to be able to do all 40 damage to it in just two cycles. Nice. You even know how much damage you need to do to... <laughs> okay. If you, if you practice with boss debug on enough, you, you figure it out. <laughs> 
But yeah, that was a beautiful two cycle, and that's what we want. And now we are entering the second uh, phase of the uh, emerald golem, yep. and this is totally RNG based, unfortunately. So you need to have luck that uh, the emerald golem core is going into the correct direction. What we want is as wide and as low as possible. We didn't get that because it's based on RNG, unfortunately, but it was still an okayish pattern. And that was uh, holding Grotto, so we are entering now the, I think casually a pretty <coughs> tough stage uh, called Quish Room Marsh. And we also get introduced to a lot of new enemies in Quilts. Yeah, so the Quish Room Marsh uh, level was one of the hardest for me casually, especially the boss. I spent, spent a lot of time on it. So, so yeah, we got mushrooms now that are throwing their head towards us. We got mushrooms now that are throwing spikes at us. So everything wants to kill us. And we also have this kind of sandish, muddy looking stuff that tries to drag us downwards. So yeah, not a fun level to play casually. And even in the speed run, this can be uh, pretty much intimidating and also pretty damn hard. Uh, even uh, even as a beginner or even as a yeah veteran. This room is called we call it right room. It's the longest horizontal room in this in the category and I think in the game. Uh, here we really get to see the power of that wingsuit slash. It makes it really easy to fly above fly above all the obstacles, uh, which is really nice. Um, uh, and like we'll see we'll see in these later stages how useful it is to gain that extra bit of height um, in these rooms. No. Oh no. That's a pretty precise jump over that, that whole ring. I rarely miss that. It's fine. Yeah, as you can see, a lot of these vertical two, stuff yeah. we need to do here. Uh, these two screens are like really hard to like get good at. Yeah, you very have to very carefully route out and practice where which ones you're slashing normally, which ones you're wingsuit slashing. Yeah, as There's you can see nice here, we yeah, as you can see here, we try to mitigate going too much towards the switch with the shurikens. Uh, that was beautifully done. Yeah. But yeah, these rooms can be pretty damn hard. Uh, the tunnel used to be my bane, but now I've got, I've got a good handle on it. So next, next up is a bully, uh, bully room. Uh, you can go through this room only taking one damage. It's yeah, it's, it just not sucks. not. <laughs> it's pretty damn hard, and you need optimized. Yeah, in uh, going into the room pretty damn optimized and also your movement needs to be pretty damn tight to go with one damage through that room. Yeah, here's another room now uh, where we see cycles. There's a really, really tight cycle skip in it that, that we won't see, but still uh, uh, just just a little bit too slow to go around the platform. Um, still a very nice room. But yeah, this was already the end of Quilts, and we will come up to, I think, one of the hardest boss. Uh, the Queen of Quilts. So we try to, as you can see, she's jumping up the hooks. We try to hit her out of the hook to, yeah, that she gets fallen down. And yep. as, as you also can see, a lot of stuff is going on, so she's whipping us, she's throwing spikes at us, or needles, so it's a pretty rough fight, uh, but it was beautifully done, so unfortunately yeah. not whipless, so we call it whipless yeah, if you actually... don't see any whips, but yeah, you didn't see, uh, unfortunately we got whipped. We're actually too good there, we did too much damage to her, which triggered her into the whipping phase. Um, there's once there's a damage threshold, this one I don't know, but once you hit that threshold, then she does this whip pa whips pattern, which loses about nine seconds. So entering now is Searing Cracks, and if you fought... <laughs> yeah, for <laughs> Halfling. And if you fought, uh, the speed one is already fast, 
Now we get the rope dart, or yeah, you can call it also a grappling hook, but the game indicates that it's a rope dart. And with that, the speed one is getting even faster. So with the rope dart, we try to grab as many walls as possible, try to uh, mitigate any distance. We use it for faster climbing. And yeah, the movement just uh, is just getting insane with the rope dart. This is where the run starts in my mind. Yeah, it's such a great a great tool for going fast. It, it's yeah. really what at least makes this game is an awesome speed run for me. Um, here we'll see a nice little skip. Very good. Yep. Uh, using that, using the cloud step from that stalactite uh, to skip the skip sort of most of those two rooms. Not gonna lie, I was going to try to go for the key of strength here, but I'm actually on a very, very good pace, so I don't want to waste the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, there's a there's a cool skip you can do that uses uh, a, a glitch called leashing, where you get one of the items from later in the game uh, out of sequence. Saves like three minutes for any percent. It's it's a cool strat, but yeah, you gotta gotta respect the pace, of course. I'm like, yeah, and also we are playing linear, so we don't need it. And linear, yeah. Yeah, we don't need it. Yeah, and any percent we would get it. No. Oh, Whatever. no. Whatever. But doing a long jump there kind of skips the spawning of one of the enemies. That's why I go for it. Oh, really? I didn't yeah. know that. That's cool. One of the red ones. Yeah. Oh, yeah, those guys. So next up, uh, next up is Colors and Seuses, the boss of Seeming Cracks, and yeah, Hafting can explain what these two guys are doing towards you in the speed one and even casually. <laughs> so, so these guys are a pair of brothers. One of them only does arm day, and the other only does leg day. Um, That's a fast uh, And we interrupted them, so they're gonna fight us. But basically, this boss is a really terrible RNG choke point. Um, because they have all these different patterns you can choose from, you can either get a fight done in 51 seconds, or the fight can take you well over a minute, um, assuming your execution is perfect. So it, it can kill a lot of runs. Um, not, not a very fun boss um, yeah. at all. The more you grind this game, the more you will hate this boss. <laughs> yeah, you've lost <laughs> more runs than almost anyone to them. Your luck has been terrible. He's dead. Just go away, man. But yeah, they're more than enough damage. And because the ending is scripted, even if you kill one of, even if you kill them, you have to wait uh, until the ending where they go in and tag out and die. Um, so you can sometimes just be sitting around waiting for them to, to trigger. All right. Going into Glacial Peak, yeah. sho shovel please in the chat. Um, this is one of the best, one of the best uh, songs on the soundtrack, especially in this run. Uh, uh, if Crags was teaching us how to use the rope dart, this is where it gets to really shine, um, and we're sort of using that in combination with all of our other movement abilities uh, to get through the stage. Oh, shoot. Yeah, Gla Glacier Peak kind of combines, or the game forces you to use everything that you've learned throughout the game. And yeah, you can go pretty damn fast on the stage, and doing the stage uh, in a fast way is really uh, an awesome feeling. Yeah. And as you can see, we have a lot of vertical movement now in Glacial. We also had that in Cracks already, but Glacial is yeah, kind of popping off in vertical movement. Yeah, climbing the mountain. But it's it's basically like if Celeste was a level, uh, we're climbing the mountain um, and getting to the top. There's a cool, oh, too bad. There's a cool skip you can go there uh, to skip the bouncy pads. Those We'll see skipping more of them later. Those bouncy pads are usually pretty slow. Um, so we're gonna yeah. just avoid all of these and rope dart these stalactite icicles, I guess, in this level instead. Well, it's fine. We're fine. So 
So here we get another glimpse at a guy we already saw in Bamboo. And yeah, later in the game we will get to know who this guy is, but yeah, we don't want to spoil that yet. And yeah, not really m much more to tell about Glacier, as you can see a lot of vertical movement. We try to rob dart uh, as many places as possible to make the distance smaller. Uh, make use of the lanterns with the cloud steps. And here we saw a so-called teleport, so we will not go into much detail how they work technically, but basically speaking, we are just switching positions with an enemy because we rope dart them before we uh, kill, uh, before the enemy was killed. And yeah, due to a bug in the game or memory, or due to how the game handles memory, this is possible. And yeah, we reach the mountain now, we are visiting our guys with blue ropes and basically now the scroll is summoning the so-called Tower of Time and the blue ropes are giving us the last task to complete this Tower of Time to, yeah. I don't, I don't know how you want to call that, but to, yeah, solve or, yeah, do our destiny as a messenger. A final... So. It's a final, final challenge to prove ourselves worthy, I think. Is the, yeah, proof. Uh, I was missing the word proof. <laughs> yeah. Very, very difficult level casually and in the speed game. Uh, it's earned its moniker as the Tower of Tears. It's where runs go to die. Um, yeah, you have a lot. Lasers, these lasers deal 4 HP. It's, <laughs> it's not, it can be a very not fun time. Yeah, as you can see, a lot of lasers, we... Uh... The further you evolve into speedrunning this game, the more damage boosts you would take in this stage, and that makes it even more scary. So, uh, yeah. uh, for myself, I lost a lot of runs uh, in Tower of Time due to stupid damage boosting or the so called Wiz Ropes that we see here in some places that yeah, just shoots RNG based uh, projectiles at you. It's, it's a pretty awful stage sometimes. <laughs> Yeah. I don't know the fast threat for this room. So we see we see the mechanics with these crystals here. Um, and in a we saw it once and we'll see it again. You can do some cool strats where you hit the crystals through a wall that lets you skip uh, some sections and do stuff faster. This guy's gonna hit me. Yep. Yeah, so, you have the lovely wisp ropes. Uh, you will hate these people later if you speed one in this game. Nice cloud step glitch, by the way. Yeah, very nice. Some there's an interaction with those blue blue crystals that keeps the little cloud step sprite underneath your ninja, even though you don't actually have one. This one I know how to hit through the wall, but I haven't practiced getting past the uh, the column. Oh uh, yeah, Hard. especially if you go the full cycles. Kuni cycle is very difficult. Yeah. Yeah. Shout shout out to Kuni. Also a great speed uh, runner of this game. Great, great OG runners, yeah. Uh, this is a room where we sort of have to wait on these things. Some There's, yeah. again, more difficult damage boost that you could go for, but uh, in a marathon setting, uh, it can be, it's a little bit too risky. Nice. Yeah, one, uh, once once you're doing one, uh, if you do one mistake doing this damage boost, you either get stuck or you need to take an intentional death. So they're not that safe for marathon settings. No walk of shame today. So we want to try to save a shuriken so we don't have to walk all the way across that blue crystal, um, the so-called walk of shame. Yeah, if, if uh, you nice. fail uh, preserving that shuriken, you need to take the walk of shame. I think it only saves one or two seconds, so it isn't that much. But yeah, we try to mitigate that, uh, mitigate time as much as possible. This is another terrible wizard, wizard room that likes to kill runs. Yeah, I have nightmares of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is this is called time waster room because essentially we just wait in these blue crystals and we get out and we slash another blue crystal. Um, 
The one thing we can do, though, you see we actually hit that crystal through the wall. Um, because of how your slash is actually, I think, longer when you when you are attached to a wall, uh, to my understanding, which means you can, by doing a certain set of inputs, you can slash the crystal through the wall and skip one of the sets of crystals. I am bad okay, at the and... version of Laser Bridge skips, so I don't do any of the skips here. Okay, and we are approaching the final boss now of the so-called 8-bit category. It's the Arcane Golem, the final exam, final yeah boss we need to take on. I think casually this fight really sucks. <laughs> but once you learn the kind of the speed one strats, uh, it can still suck pretty bad, but uh, yeah, we're getting the arcane golem down pretty fast. Yeah, no, no, we can no, use no, no. no. The rope okay. dart gives you invincibility frames, which means we don't have. We actually don't. Once we were attached and like in a good rope dart pattern, we, we don't take any damage from uh, from them, and we can just keep doing damage to the big head of the uh, arcane golem. Now that's a PB by 11 seconds on 8 bit. <sighs> and now you also yes. you also see my my main argument Very for, nice. for doing linear over UG. doing 8 bit. Whenever oh. you get an 8 bit PB, you're also on a really good pace for a linear PB. So now let's see if I can PB that as well. So yeah, law wise, uh, we did the yeah. tower of time now. We um, and the blue orbs are telling us, hey, ninja, just jump down this big hole. And yeah, now stuff happened. We have a cool hat now. As you can see, the, the graphics kind of improved to a more 16-bit or SNES era. And we are in the future now. And I don't know anymore why we need to jump into the future. I don't know. Do you know the lore, Halfling, why we need to jump into the future? I've forgotten it. Uh, I believe the reason is because... Um, we delivered the scroll, uh, we became the messenger, and now we, as, as the messenger, we have to go into the future, uh, 500 years into the future to save... Um, ah, yeah, for the cycle, because uh, every 500 years, uh, in, a mess the new messenger is saving the new potential messenger, and that's why we need to go into the future, yeah. Yeah. I missed something. There's okay. yeah, yeah. There's there's a bunch of there's a cycle and and there's a ton of lore and a curse. It, it's crazy if you if you play the game and stick with it into any percent. But yeah, we get to enjoy the revamped graphics, the the awesome soundtrack. Yeah, Cloud um, Wounds is also pretty damn fun to play. Yeah. Uh, despite one thing that we will see shortly, but yeah, the soundtrack from the stage is pretty yeah. pretty great. And that one thing is the main reason people prefer to run 8-bit over linear. <laughs> yeah. I don't mind Partly like, I don't mind doing multiple attempts to like get it properly. Just so you know. If I miss if I miss it, I'm gonna yeah. keep trying it. It can it can be a rewarding it can linear can be really rewarding, but it can also these stages can get really frustrating. Yeah, uh, because of Manfred, uh, this mean dragon you see. Sky Serpent, sorry. Sky Dragon. Serpent, yeah. Just wanted to say he's not a dragon. Uh, but yeah, this is Manfred. <laughs> uh, as you can see, we have auto scroller chasings in um, Cloud Wounds. And yeah, also Manfred is the main reason. So Manfred will be the boss of the stage, and he's the main reason people don't like Linear. Because there's one strat you need to do that's called Ballfoot. So. We will get later uh, to that once we are fighting Manfoot. But yeah, due to the strat and the RNG based yeah, execution of the strat, um, yeah, people it's have not RNG, but still uh, very yeah, inconsistent. Yeah. It's hard to get it consistent. And yeah, people hate linear for that. Because basically, as your time improves uh, in linear, it's kind of a requirement to get that strat, and if you don't get it, uh, it's a 45 to 30 second time loss, depending how good your yeah, fight overall of Manfred is. Here we saw a small That'd teleport cool. again. Very nice. 
learned that one recently. And, and this is the second chase uh, with Manfred, so we have one chase coming up after that. And yeah, there's not really much stuff you need to do, just you need to take care to land on the clouds, so... And yeah, don't get too close to Manfred. Yeah, there's uh, Vlack, I believe, was the one who did this chase. We do, uh, in the community, there's a, uh, we don't have task tools, but we essentially like combine the best times for every room. Um, and it is possible to go ahead of the screen and do the entire room without actually being able to see what you're doing. Uh, so Vlack, a very talented runner, uh, did this screen blind and it, and it saves about like five to 10 seconds. Um, but that's, such a the execution of stuff like that is so hard that in runs we're we're sort of forced to just sit and chill with the auto scroll yeah i think but, but a fun is fact also, the on, also the only one yeah practicing that pretty much yeah it's very very tough so one one last man for chase um this one, it's not its not too bad. We see this this red guy, we can choose to kill him or save him. We'll see what, we'll see what happens. <laughs> and by save, I mean let him fall off the stage. Oh, wow, yeah. brutal. No mercy, kill the animals. No mercy. <laughs> <Yeah>. Save the flames. <laughs> but yeah, if you, one, if you let him, one time if you I let saved him the, live, uh, you can even get an achievement in this game, I think. So for the One time I hunters. let him live and I fell off. So. <laughs> I'm never, never doing that again. <laughs> Dies every yes. time. So, so yeah, Halfling, can you explain a bit more about Manfred, Ballfoot? So, so this is Manfred, uh, another very difficult boss, especially casually. Uh, we'll see if we get it. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Okay, awesome. oh. No. So you saw how he went into a ball and started staying in one place. That's not supposed to happen. And it basically has to do with if you can position the ninja at a precise spot inside Manfred's head when he starts that attack, um, he just gets stuck there. So I think we were we were really close to the right spot there, but just slightly off. Uh, very, very precise, very difficult. But then Manfred will just stay in that one spot um, and you can just do damage until the fight is over. Um, otherwise we get, it's not too bad, but still a fairly difficult fight. Now he's going faster, he's madder. Almost, almost have dealt all the damage we need to. Yeah, and you can mitigate the time loss if you don't get ball foot, but, uh, yeah, ball foot saves you 30 seconds, uh, at least, um, so... Even the top runners like Halfling, Grandius, etc. Yeah, it's a requirement that you get ball foot for a good linear PB. Yeah. I said yeah. I would like keep trying until I got it, but I think I got enough of it to like show people what it's like. Yeah. You can <laughs> you can sit there and try the strat for hours and, and not get it, so definitely Sorry. reasonable to not. As you could see, the, the guy following us through the stages is the Demon General that we saw in the bottom right corner at the beginning of the game, doing the Ninja Village uh, scene. And yeah, this guy forces us now to go to the Underworld and fight him. So this is the last stage for Linear. This is the Underworld, pretty cool stage and also uh, pretty nice to play. As you can see, we have a lot of lava now uh, all over the place. And we need our need to make our way now towards the demon general to fight him. Yeah, we'll see. There's two types of lava on the stage. One is like this flat lava that we see in the screen right now. Um, and that you can, if you take damage, you can run through it. If you, um, if you get in, there's an upgrade that lets you like walk on top of it later in the game. Um, and there's other lava that we saw and we'll see again that we call Fanta really bubbly lava that looks a bit like orange soda um but that is an instant death uh when you touch it no ifs ands or buts um and that's that's lava that will move and it'll chase you through stages and, and things like that so it can be a bit scary casually us we go too fast to, for it really ever to be that much of a concern 
I didn't even know that we called it Fanta. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've, it's yep. it's a fun nickname now that I've seen some places. And we skip that checkpoint there because we don't need the checkpoint. We're not gonna die, <laughs> and it's faster. <laughs> yeah, sure. I <laughs> shouldn't have said that. No, yeah. <laughs> now you jinx it. We've got some Fanta on the bottom of the sea of the screen here. The screen. Yeah, we're never gonna see again. A big screen. vertical room where the lava, Fanta, orange soda, or however you want to call it, uh, is slowly but surely mm -hmm. chasing you. Um, so you need to go a little bit faster here. But since we are so fast doing the speed one, you, yeah, you will never see that again. And we are already done with the room. Yeah, that's a very fun room to like get perfectly. There we look really cool falling right in between the saws, but you can just hold right and, and jump off and, and you won't take damage ever. Um, but it, it definitely looks looks like a very difficult strat. And if you need, uh, if you pay attention, this is the 16-bit version of the Ninja Village soundtrack that we heard in the beginning, so... Oh, this is the last boss, by the way. Oh, Demon fuck. theme. Yeah, here's yeah, the, the final boss of Linear. I actually Bar messed up the strat. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> I forgot to like start walking forward. I'll just show you the, the good strat because I'm not going to PB anyway. Here we go. So he, what you see here is we're doing uh, 10 flashes and then throwing a shuriken. 11. And that basically locks, locks Barma in position. Um, I'm not sure if it's intentional or not that it works that way, but that means you can just sit there and do a ton of damage uh, without him really fighting back. Um, which is a which is fun and nice to make the fight a lot more manageable because once you get into this phase, especially casually and even and time, run, by the way, very difficult. Time. Yeah, time, GG. GG. All right, very nice. sub forty five is like very something I'm very happy with. Yeah, that's that's really that's a really good time. Very solid. Yeah. So yeah, this was linear, and the demon general now explodes, kinda, and wants to kill us. We fall down this big hole, but luckily Manfred, who is good now, uh, is saving us. And this is also where his name gets revealed. So before that, we, yeah, you know it, but normally you don't know that this guy is called Manfred. And yeah, this is now the part where the game would go into the Metroidvania part. And as you can see, we are in the future now, as already to uh, as we already told you, we see the Ninja Village in the future. And yeah, we um, 500 years in the future, the Demon General is again attacking the Ninja Village. Uh, a guy needs to fight him, and now we are the messenger who, or the Western hero, who saves the new messenger and gives the scroll towards the next messenger. Right. With that, I think it's time for us to start uh, transitioning towards the next run, which is uh, Metroid Dread, which is going to be pretty cool, I think. Uh, I'd like to thank Zos for hosting me, for having the marathon. I do think. Rainbow Railroad for all they do. Thank you to Zo uh, to Zost, to Storms and Halfling for the commentary. I don't know if you guys have anyone you want to thank. Uh, only shout out, out shout out to the Bamboo Crew. Yeah, of course. Uh, it's a it's an awesome computering community. Um, uh, it's a super fun game to run. We'd love to have you. Um, yeah. we've got a yeah, lot of resources thanks. for you to learn as well. Yeah, for sure. So yeah, uh, but I think that's it though, so last words. Just going to wait on the confirmation that we're off screen, I think. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can go right now, Zos, if you want. Right, I believe we are three.
I will take the yes sir as a confirmation that we are no longer on uh, on stream. <laughs> Yeah, even I have huge delay, I'm just checking. Okay. If we're still on stream, I'm just going to keep going until uh, I do the Key of Hope skip, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get naked. Because I didn't get to show the, uh, the leash, I want to show off something at least. <laughs> we're still on stream. <laughs> we're still on stream. <laughs> yeah, so seems like we're still on stream. We're really a sneak peek at any percent now. Yeah. Yeah. That's not the normal route we do for any percent, but you know, whatever. Oh yeah, it turns out that the scroll we were carrying is just a map and we can just look at it. Yeah, we could could have looked at it the whole time. Ah, No, I've been Get, practicing this in a while. Getting, getting the 2C. Uh, Dude, I haven't done the normal one in a while. It's just weird considering I've been doing randos where I need to do this all the time. Yes, you are supposed to switch over now. I'm just playing around. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to keep playing until uh, until the 